Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Josh Morris and today I'm going to give you a trading view tutorial with tons of advanced tips and tricks on how I use this website to easily watch the markets and analyze the markets and I'll show you how I use it as well. So if you're new here, my name is Josh Morris as I said and on this channel we talk about self-development, uh, making money, improving your life and happiness, relationships and anything that improves your mind and improves your life. So if that's something that you like and you're not subscribed, then hit the subscribe button because on this channel, I take complicated concepts, something like TradingView, and I break it down into the simplest possible ways. Now, let's dive into TradingView, first of all. It's a platform for uh, watching the markets and analyzing the markets. Obviously, you know that. That's why you're here looking for a tutorial. There are many tutorials out there, and I've watched many of them, and I'm going to make this one slightly different in that I'm going to break it down and only talk about the most important elements of the TradingView platform that I use. So first things first, if you haven't already got a TradingView account, go over to TradingView. You can use my link, my affiliate link at the bottom. And if you do use my affiliate link, let me know in the comments and I will give you a special bonus later. Um, and if you don't want to use that, then just go over to TradingView, click start free trial and then click start now and just sign in with your Facebook or Google or use it, create a username. It's very, very easy. And I'm going to leave that like that. I'm not going to go too much into detail. When you do get to the main trading view homepage, this is what you're going to see. I'm going to hide this stuff on the side menu. So this is what you're going to see. And I'm going to break down these menus one by one really, really easily and tell you exactly what I use. By the way, if you like that I'm breaking down this complicated platform in a really easy way, then smash up the like button because this website confused the heck out of me when I started. There's so much going on. So hit the like button because today I'm going to break it down for you in really easy way. So first things first, right over here on the right hand side menu, all you need to think about is this is the watch list. This is a list of your companies or stocks that you're watching. You can see you can create new lists. I've got Coinbase lists with all the, you know, the coins, uh, cryptocurrencies. I've got favorite companies list with all my favorite companies that I'm watching. So that's what that's useful for. OK, these are some commodities. So you can just create lists in various areas depending on how you want to do it. With this also, I've created an organizational method method uh, where you can click this flag and you can change the color of the flag. And I'll explain that to you in a minute. OK, so that's the watch list watch list. The next thing is the time is the is the time clock thing. These are your alerts. So if you have any alerts, you know, you say I want to be alerted when the price hits a certain amount. That's where your alerts are going to be. And that's pretty much the only thing I use in there. This is the hot ideas list. I don't want to their hot list calendar. I don't use ideas. I rarely use. Sometimes I post my own ideas um, chat. I never use and nothing else I use. So again, I don't want to overcomplicate this. That's the stuff I use the watch list is the main thing I use and I usually keep it open on the watch list. OK, so that's the main menu. Now we want to go into the charts. Obviously, there's tons of stuff on this site and I've barely ever used any of this. I don't use the screener. I don't use the scripts. You know, I only go into the market. So when you if you want to go into the charts, find any market and just click on it, click on any market anywhere and there's tons of ways and then you can see this button to take you into a full featured chart. Click on the full featured chart and this will take you into a chart. Now there's one other way to do this really quickly and I don't know why they don't make it easy for you to do this, but you just type in tradingview.com right slash chart and that should take you to any of the charts that you're used to watching. As you can see, I watch Tesla quite a lot. So we'll stay on the Tesla um, and I'll show you what's inside the trading view chart area. This is where you're going to spend most of your time while you're analyzing the markets. So let's break it down on the right hand side. Again, you've got your watch list. This is the pretty much the only thing I use. But again, if you want to use these other ones, go ahead. I'm going to keep it simple. On the top menu, you can choose the the uh, asset that you're looking at here. So right here, it's Tesla, but you can type in anything. So you can see when I type in Tesla comes up with Tesla at the top. But I can also type in USD and it will find me, you know, USD pairs. Um, you can also type in Apple and it will take you to Apple. You type in Bitcoin 
and it will take you to Bitcoin. So this is where you can find anything that you want to trade and it will give you the chart. So let's stay on Tesla. The next thing right over here is this is the time frame. So right now we are using the candlestick patterns and that's where that's on this uh, button right here. You can choose candles. Now I'll only show you a few of these because I only use a few of these and I want to keep this video quite simple. So right here, when I have it on a day, every single candle right here is a day. Now if you don't know how to read candlestick patterns, I'm going to have a video coming out on that soon. But if I break this down to a four hour, then now every single candle is four hours. Very, very simple to remember. If you have the line chart, which is my one of my second favorite ways of doing this, and for beginners I say it's the favorite way because you can easily see patterns, every single point on this line chart is another four hours. So four hours, and then four hours, and then four hours. So that's the time frame. So very, very useful. I'll keep it on the daily for the moment, and I'll keep it on the line chart for the moment. The next thing you can do is you can compare symbols. So let's say I wanted to compare Tesla with Apple. I just put Apple in and it overlays and now I can see that Apple and Tesla, they are, it's showing both of the charts. That shows up over here and you can hide these sections by clicking this button. And right now I'm just gonna delete that, but that's the compare. Then you've got the indicators, which I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail soon. The financials, which are very interesting if you're trying to trade stocks. Then you can save these as templates. You can see I've got all the templates here. You can add alerts and you can actually create, you can do a replay. So you can select a time. Let's say you wanted to practice trading. So you can select a time over here. You can see now it's cut off the future and then now I can play. And what it's doing is it's showing me how it's working. So if you ever wanted to practice your trading, you could just go to a chart that you're not used to and then click the replay button and just click on a random place and then say to yourself, okay, where do I think this chart is gonna go? So I think it's gonna come down to about 220, 210, just based on this. So I'm gonna play it and let's see what it does. Probably won't. No, Tesla was amazing. Oh, it's coming down. No, it's not. Oh, it's going down. No, it's not. So you can do this and you can, um, you can push it forward and you can basically see what the chart is gonna do. That's what replay is useful for, but I don't use it too much if I'm completely honest with you. That's the top menu. The left, oh, there's a bit one, there's one over here. There's some stuff over here. Okay, so you can select the layout um, and you can have different layouts. So that's interesting. You can save the whole uh, thing as a chart layout and then all of your charts will have this same layout. I'm only speeding through this stuff because I don't use it that much. The main stuff I use is on the left, so I'm getting to the cool stuff. Do you wanna make this video too long? You can publish and that will publish it as an idea. So if I like this idea, I can publish, type the idea in, say what it is, blah, blah, blah. Then I can post that as an idea and you can see I've got some of my ideas over here. Again, I don't use that too much, so let's move on. That's the top menu right there. So now you've got a deep view of the side menu of what I use and of the top menu. Hopefully this stuff is sinking in and this video isn't getting too long and too boring. <laughs> Um, so before we go to the left menu, I'm going to show you some of the indicators um, that I like to that I like to use. Actually, I'm just going to tell you what the left menu is. So the left menu is all of the drawing tools that you can use to draw on the chart. You can see you can paint on the chart, you can draw on the chart. So then you can click the, this button to go back. So if you have a drawing, you can press this left button to go back. That's the back button. You can go forward if you want to go forward. So those are the drawing tools. So I'm gonna put some indicators on the chart right now so we have some more stuff to play with, more stuff to draw with. So what indicators do I like? So I click on indicators and these are my favorite indicators. Feel free to screenshot just to see them. But I like putting the Willy on. <laughs> this is the Williams percentage R and I like putting the RSI. So I don't know where that is. Relative strength. This is the relative strength index. The relative strength index and the willy are quite similar, so I'm gonna delete the willy off of that. And then I like having the MACD. These are two momentum studies. So as you can see, oh, I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so these are two momentum studies. Another indicator I like is the uh, EMAs, and that's the exponential moving averages. And I like the EMA Hydra, and I'll tell you why. Uh, maybe it's not available anymore, interesting. So the reason I like EMA Hydra, oh, it's a locked tool. So if you can get hold of that 
or an EMA with multiple, like a double EMA or a triple EMA, that's better because TradingView with a free account only allows you to have a handful, I think maybe five indicators on the chart. So if you want to have multiple moving averages on your chart, then you wanna make sure you use a triple EMA just so you can have multiple, right? So right over here, you can go into the settings of each one. So you can see here's the volume. I can make it appear and disappear by clicking the I and I can click on these settings. I can change the style. I can change the inputs and that shows up there. And then the, the triple EMA right here, I can show the settings and I don't know why it's saying triple EMA if there's only one. So that's a little bit strange, but there are indicators where you can have an EMA Hydra. I recommend trying to hit this guy up because here you can see you've got a whole bunch of EMAs um, all in one. So I can change them. I've got the 13 and 30. You've got the 200 EMA, which is a very popular um, moving average for the market to stop at or bounce off. The 50, the 100. And I've got this all within one indicator. So that's a cool hack if you want to show that indicator, if you want to have multiple moving averages with the one, within one indicator. The next thing is I like to have volume. And that's already in there. As you can see, this is volume. But just so you can see what it is, uh, it's just this one, volume, right? And then I like to have on balance volume as well. And sometimes I like to put the on balance volume and the volume in the same chart. So the way you can do this is you click this menu right here and you can do this with any of them. And you can say move to existing pane below or you can click and now it's down here. So you can move it to a new pane below or a new pane above. So now it's in a new pane below. I can click this arrow to move the pane up and then I can, again, go in here and I can move to existing pane above. So now I've got the volume and the on balance volume in the same section. So this just makes it easier. So I can always uh, double tap on one of these. And now I've got the volume study all in one. So if I want to analyze the volume, I can see that on balance it's ranging and um, the volume is going down. And I, and I won't break down each indicator for this video, but you can see that's how I do it. Um, so for the moment, I'm going to keep this open, right? So that's how, that's, those are some of the indicators that I add. And now let's go to the left menu. So first of all, you've got this option up here where you can have an arrow. Uh, and it, your, your icon is just an arrow. You can also have an eraser. So let's say you're drawing and then you put the eraser on and all you have to do is click on it and it's gone. So that eraser is very useful. I like to keep it on the cross. And the reason is because when you keep it on the cross, you can see at the bottom the date and on the right, the price, wherever you're at. So I can hover over this dot and I can see that it's 884 on the 4th of December, on the 4th of February. So that's very useful. Then you've got the trend lines and I only really use the trend line and the ray and I'll show you why. So the trend line is simply just to draw a trend line, right? Just draw a line. So I may want to draw, let me put this on a weekly time frame just so it doesn't look so messy. And I'll put it back to candles so you can see some nice fun, okay? So I may draw a trend line uh, from this line to this line and I may like draw it out like that just to see where it might go. So I've drawn it out like that to see where it might go. And of course the market came and stopped here. So that would have been a great indicator. But another version of this is the ray. Okay, so what I do is, and this you've got to be really accurate, but you put it at the bottom and you line it up with another bottom and then it creates a ray and it pushes it out. You can also do this with the trend line. For example, if I put this trend line like that and I go into settings, I can change the style and I can extend the left line or I can extend the right line. So I can turn it into a ray. Okay, now I love rays because of what they actually show. And you can see here what they show. And here I've got the settings. So I'm gonna make that more visible. So I drew a ray from the bottom of here to the bottom of here. And that gave me, if you look at this chart, <laughs> this is beautiful. It's like pretty much exactly on the dot of that ray. And that was drawn from 2014 to 2016 and all the way in 2019 last year it came and it tagged it before completely taking off this is another example of a ray so i've got that from the high of 2014 to another high of 2014 and the market didn't touch it for a very long time until it came and hit it over here so you can see rays are really useful for predicting the market so those are two big ones that i use over here 
The horizontal ray I use for horizontal support and resistance. So I may put one here, horizontal support. This is a horizontal resistance. And often resistance turns into support and support turns into resistance. So right over here, when it broke through the resistance here, screamed all the way up and then came back down, slammed into what is now support and then bounced back up again. So support and resistance is really powerful. So I trick out my chart. That's a term I learned from Brian Beamish with all these... Um, horizontal supports and resistance. So that's a lot of the horizontal support. Now, in this section, you've got all of these tools. I don't use any of them. I've just used the ones at the start. And again, I'm cutting out all the fluff here, just showing you the stuff that I actually personally use. This is the fib retracement tool. This is one of my favorite tools. So smash up the like button if you like Fibonacci and the, fit and the magic of the Fibonacci number. Hit the like button so I know how many people like the Fibonacci tool. This is my number one tool and I've got another video. I'm gonna post it below or above or look it for it on my channel, my number one trading tool and that is the Fibonacci retracement tool. And what that is, is you draw it from the bottom to the top to see how much the market will retrace back and you draw it from the top to the bottom to see how much the market will retrace up. Okay, so right here I drew it from the bottom to the top, and of course, again, I'm taking my brush here for fun, and the market came all the way back down into this area here, which is called the reload zone. And what I like to do is on this brush tool as well, you can click to the right and click on the rectangle, and I like to draw from the 61.8, area to the 78.6, a green box, and I can change this to different colors if I double click on it. So any double click will take bring up the settings, and you can also change some of the options here. If you do change the colors, you can also set it as a new template, right? So I have multiple templates. I have red template, purple template, green template. Right now, this is showing that the market will retrace into that area, so it's going to be a green box, and when the market retraces into a short area, then this is going to be a red box, right? So that's very useful to have the, the Fibonacci and the, and the rectangle tool both in one. Now, I don't use many other tools other than the Fibonacci tool in this section. I like to start using the GAN tools, but I, I don't, won't go into that into this video. It's quite advanced. So now let's go to the brush tool. The brush tool is really, really useful just for kind of drawing on the chart, predicting where the chart's gonna go, and it's fun. So <laughs> right now, let's say we draw from the bottom to the top here, and we say, where's the market gonna come back to? So let's move our little box here. You can keep the same boxes. And now I will use the brush tool to say, okay, I think the market's gonna come back down to here. You can change the thickness of this brush, the color of the brush, and you can even, uh, if you double click on it, you can even change the ending to an arrow. So you can draw it with an arrow. Oh, I think I wanted to put it on that side. <laughs> so you could put an arrow on this side. So you can draw it going up and down with an arrow, Wee! Um, so let's delete all of that because I'm having way too much fun right now and this is meant to be a tutorial video. So that's how you draw the brush tool, that's really useful. The next one is the text tool. I sometimes use this if I'm ever annotating. So this is an annotation. And there we go. I can obviously change the color. And then you've get, got some annotations you can have on the chart. So that's really simple. Then we go down to this weird looking cipher looking thing. And the only one I really like to use here is the head and shoulders tool. So let's try and find an example of the head and shoulders pattern. Uh, maybe we'll look for one on a different chart. So to get to a different chart, you just click on your on your watch list and let's go to the main S&P 500. So right over here, I would say that this is semi left shoulder and then head right over here and then right shoulder, a little bit skewed. And that is a head and shoulders pattern. And this is just one way to draw it. Let's uh, move on, okay? The next one over here is this is pre the predictive stuff. I'm gonna show you a couple of cool tricks with this one. And I'm going to remove everything on this chart first of all. So you can do a long position or a short position prediction. So let's say I thought right over here the market was gonna go up so I could draw my risk window and you always wanna have a two to one risk. And there's a two to one, you can see it says two. 
So that's a minimum two to one. If you don't know much about risk, then check out my risk masterclass. It's a long video on how to manage risk. Very, very important. So make sure you check that out. So this is a predictive tool. You can draw long positions or short positions. And I wanna show you something really cool right now that not many people have shown in their trading view tutorials. So I'm gonna show it. This is called the bars pattern. So you click on bars pattern and then you click from anywhere in the chart to anywhere in the chart and it creates this bar pattern that's equal to the bar pattern that I showed. Now I'm gonna make this much more visible, so nice and blue. And now what you can do, you can double click this and you can mirror and flip it to start predicting what's gonna happen next. So the market likes to often do things that are very, very predictive, right? So you can see if I draw this here, you can see that it's had a down move and up move and now the market is predicting that it keeps going up. You can also, let's duplicate this, and if you ever want to clone something, you just click clone. And another way to do this is to click on control and you just drag it, oh no, or command and drag it. So I'm clicking command on my keyboard and that's a Mac, so it's probably the Windows key on a PC. And you just click and drag and now you've got two of them. So with this one, I can, instead of mirroring it, I can just, instead of flipping it, I can just mirror it. So maybe this one comes over here and you can sense that maybe the market is going to do something like this. So the market often does things that look like fractals like that, they're called fractals, where the market kind of does similar things that it did before. So you can draw predictive patterns like that. And that's really cool. Now maybe it won't do something like that extreme, but potentially it might do something like this from here to here and you can double click this to get to the settings and maybe it does something like this now, right? So this could be a fractal pattern where it comes down, it hits these lows again and then spikes back up, then pulls it back down and then goes back into its uptrend. Um, and that's a cool way to predict the markets. The next thing, and I don't use anything else really in there, this is icons, I rarely use them unless I'm annotating the chart, they're just a bit of fun. The measurement tool I don't really use, but it measures price and time. So that might be useful to some people. The, oh, the, I don't think I meant to delete that. Okay, the next thing is the zoom in. You don't need to do that because I just zoom in using my uh, scroll and my mouse. I can zoom in and out very easily, so I don't really ever use that. The magnet tool I find very useful because when I'm drawing fibs, if I have the magnet tool off, you can see that it doesn't snap to anything, so I don't usually get it spot on. You can see it's slightly off here, but if I have the magnet tool on, then it snaps right to the top of the wick and the numbers are much more accurate. So that's a really, really good way to keep things accurate. It's also very, very important when you're drawing the ray tools and you wanna draw a trend line so let's say this trend line, this isn't a valid trend line, I'm just making this up. But you can see it just snaps to it. So it's really useful for the magnet to snap to it. And now as a predictor, I'm gonna predict that the market is gonna come hit this trend line and then come back up. So very, very useful. Uh, if this was off, even by a remote, the remotest part, and I'll show you, if I take off the magnet tool and I just try to wing it, getting close to that, getting close to that, you can see that over time, it spreads out and it gets really, really inaccurate. So make sure you draw with the magnet tool on just to get things right. The next thing is that uh, stay in drawing mode. This allows you to not have to keep clicking it. So I can draw, click on that and draw and keep drawing, right? So I can draw multiple ones. And then of course I want to erase them all. So I just click on them to erase them. So that's quite useful if you want to stay in drawing mode. Lock, locks all the drawing tools. So if you're finding that you've got so many things on the thing, on the chart, and as you move in and out, you're just moving things by accident, right? You're trying to move the chart, but you're just moving things. You can lock all drawing tools and that will stop them moving or it should stop them moving. If it doesn't, then just click on the individual lock and now you can't actually move that. So it still moves the chart. If you unlock it, you can see I can move it again. Okay, so that's another useful thing. This hides all the drawing tools. So let's say again, you've got a whole bunch of drawing tools on here. You've drawn um, loads of stuff and you wanna just hide everything. So that's simple, you just hide it or you can remove all drawing. So that's it on the left menu. Uh, it's quite straightforward. And once you have stuff drawn, 
you can do some cool stuff. So let me tell you some of the cool stuff you can do once you have it drawn. So I've drawn this. What I can do now is I can go into the settings and you've got loads of freedom. So right here, I can change this to maybe I only want to show the 50% rule, right? So that there's a GAN rule called the 50% rule. I've still got the 70.2. Oh, no, want to remove that. Go back to the selection one. And <clears throat> I've still got the 70.2. So right now, I've only got the 50% rule showing. What I can do now is I can save this template, right? So that's really useful. So I've got multiple templates saved. So right now, if I click on 4.669, then that's going to give me this. Okay, I won't show you that one. <laughs> that's a bit more of a complicated one. So let's say I'm drawing from here to here. Um, RLZ black and white, because this is for a black and white chart. I've got RLZ fade for a black, for a black chart. This is a white chart. Uh, I've got my basic retrace. I've got my 50% rule. got my extension levels. And these are all for a black chart. And you can change that by going into the settings here and making the background black. So you can do it like that. You can also change the themes. So they've got templates here, black. You can have a black template. So you can see that most of my layouts, RLZ fade, is made for the black uh, templates. And the rest are also, so the 4.669 is made for the black template. And this is a an extension tool, so you can see where the market's going to potentially extend to. And I can draw it off of this way too. So when you're drawing extensions, they're drawn the other way. So I can flip it here, reverse it, if I ever want to just show it the other way. So I'm predicting the market's going to go somewhere up there. Again, there's just many of the things you can do when you have your own custom templates. So that's really, really useful. Down here, you've got a few other things. You can paper trade stuff and add your own paper trades. Uh, you've got stock screener where you can screen different stocks. You can test the strategy. I don't really use this that much. Um, you can also properly trade uh, if you want, but I never really trade on, uh, I never trade on TradingView. I only use it as a charting tool. So that's really it. I don't want to make too. I don't want to make this too long. We're already about thirty minutes in. I hope I've given you a nice overview of everything. If I've given you some cool tips that you haven't seen before, then hit up the subscribe button because I talk about trading, making money online. I talk about other things like Amazon FBA. Uh, I talk a lot about self improvement, improving your confidence, uh, dating. I know it's strange, but I talk about dating, meeting people, going out of your comfort zone. Uh, I've got so many types of videos on this channel. So if you enjoy content that improves your life, makes you money, makes you happier, healthier, and better in your relationships, then hit that subscribe button and click the like button as well, because that really helps me in my YouTube algorithm. And I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel, guys. So that's it for this video. Uh, check out my other ones on trading. I've got a risk management class and check out the one on the fib tool, my favorite uh, trading tool. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Josh Morris. Take care and have a good day. Bye bye.